Penn State's offense is going to have this subtle but effective change, and it has to do with Drew Aller. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Get ready to see a different version of Drew Aller. For some reason, nobody's talking about the defensive tackles enough. And is there any linebacker depth? This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs wind down. The sports stop sportsing like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all of its customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And let me know down in the comments section as the Penn State offense is going to add in this change to make it a little more dynamic, and it starts with Drew Aller. It's Drew Aller's running ability. Drew Aller is going to run more, a decent amount more, because typically he'd average about six or seven carries, and some of those really weren't by design. I mean, there were those quarterback sneaks at the goal line, but sometimes Drew just tried to have, just Tried to create wherever he did. But now in this 2024 offense with Andy Kotelnicki at the helm, you are going to see a concerted effort to have Drew Aller be more of a mobile quarterback on design plays. So quarterback draws, read option plays, potentially the triple option. And this is all indicated by what exactly here? Well, in practice. So we get to see this. They are working on those type of plays read options, working with the running back on handoffs and exchange, and Drew Aller's done this with the RPO and Mike Yersich's offense, but again, there's going to be more in a, of an initiative to have Drew Aller be more of a mobile quarterback, so they're working on these plays, read options, pitching the football, so that speed option where they run off tackle, Drew Aller has the football, makes the read, and will decide to pitch it to a Nicholas Singleton, a Katron Allen, who knows, a Cam Wallace, a Quentin Martin, right, any of those running backs, maybe we see double running backs, and then you have the triple option, you go up the middle with Katron Allen, oh, now you're keeping it, Drew Aller's got it, and then Nicholas Singleton is trailing him on that third option. But Aller and the quarterbacks just in general are working on becoming more, more running, just more of a running threat particularly Aller because he is supposed to be your traditional pro-style quarterback, your pocket passer. We know about Bo Prabula and what he can do with his legs. So this is kind of a change up for Aller. The second part of this, and this is just, uh, it's a very, very, it's hidden in plain sight almost. It's hard to pick up on, but Drew Aller has lost some weight. Five, five pounds to be exact, and I, I know. I know what everybody's thinking. Zach, how is that significant? Why is that a big deal? Why are you bringing it up? Be because it is a big deal. It is a big deal. He does not have to carry as much weight. Why would you have your quarterback bulk up to 242, 243 pounds, and then have him cut back on his weight going into this season? It's so that he can be more agile. It's so that he can improve his quickness. James Franklin says this a lot about health and nutrition. When it comes to players' weight, they are not going to have them put on weight unnecessarily if it keeps them from doing things, speed, agility particularly. You don't want to just add weight just to add weight. I know that conversation was mostly around the defensive tackles, who we will talk about in the second segment, but this case also applies to Drew Aller as well. So there is subtle evidence here. Uh, what is in the forefront is that Franklin and Conal Nicky have alluded to the fact that he is going to run more. Drew Aller is not a statue. For some reason, it's really outside of the Penn State fan base. It's college football fans that don't necessarily pay enough attention to Penn State or the Big Ten, or they just try to, you know, maybe antagonize Penn State fans with it. But Drew Aller is by no means a statue. He's actually shifty in the pocket. He can move very well for someone who is six foot five around that 240 pound mark. I, I've seen it. We've all seen it in his highlights. And does he have the best straight line speed? No, I'm not trying to compare Drew Aller to a vintage Lamar Jackson. That's not what I'm trying to say here, but Aller can be mobile enough to keep defenses honest. 
He can pick up five to 10 yards and make defenses respect him. Have the QB spy force defensive ends and outside linebackers to stay disciplined and force them to hesitate. It's an element that Kotal Nicky is trying to bring into the offense to make it more dynamic. Because the main goal, the main goal of Andy Kotal Nicky's offense is to create confusion. It's to use movement. It's to force the defense into simple errors, simple mistakes, simply because they have to over communicate. They have to go with the flow of the offense. So that's where the motion element comes into it. But now you have to factor in, you have to account for the chance that Drew Aller could take off and run and get you five, 10, potentially, right? The big play, the explosive play, 15 or 20 yards. Well, that's what this is supposed to do a subtle change that will make Penn State's offense that more effective because now you can't just comfortably sit back and say, okay, we're going to stack the box and try to take away Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen because that's what happened. All right, now we can put our safeties back because Penn State is trying to air it out and Drew Aller has a strong arm and they're going to throw it deep a little more with Kotal Nicky's offense. No, you have to, you're going to be able to confuse the defense and force them to adjust on the fly and not account for one or two specific things. And that was the detriment of Penn State's 2023 offense is that they were almost, they were too predictable. They weren't almost too predictable. They were too predictable. They were one dimensional. And that's why Andy Kotelnicki was brought in. So Drew Aller, one of the keys to the offense this season is going to be this subtle change that he is going to be more of a mobile running quarterback. In addition to what Bo Prabula can do, I'm eager to see that package with Bo Prabula where there are two quarterbacks on the field at the same time, where Bo Prabula does come in and is that true option quarterback rather than Drew being the main passer, but Bo Prabula coming in and then being able to couple his strengths with a Singleton or an Allen. That's what we're going to see out of Andy Kotelnicki's offense this upcoming season. Now let's flip it to the other side of the football. For some reason, not enough people are talking about the defensive tackles when they have four players that are starting caliber. We'll discuss them on the other side of this break. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now I love sports and I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down and we get fewer of those games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to, but FanDuel, they let me keep the sports going whenever I want. And all I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all of its customers. That's right, all of its customers with a boost or a bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So all you got to do is head over to FanDuel.com and start and keep making the most out of your summer. And if you look over at FanDuel.com right now, you can see lines for Penn State versus West Virginia. Penn State is a 10 and a half point favorite, minus 360 on the money line with a total set at 50 and a half. If you like any of those lines, you can bet them all right now. You can bet all the other college football lines available, NFL lines are up, and also WNBA and Major League Baseball. Again, you can do all of that over at FanDuel.com. Once again, that's FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And today's episode is also brought to you by Home Field Apparel. College fans, football is back. And to make sure you're ready, we have partnered with Home Field as the exclusive apparel sponsor of our show to bring you their Can't Miss Kickoff 2024 campaign. Now, Home Field is the go-to for premier collegiate apparel, crafted with comfort in mind, featuring vintage designs that'll make you the envy of any tailgate. And with over 180 schools to choose from, there's something for each and every fan, including Penn State Nittany Lion fans. But here's here's the real MVP. It's the Home Field Platinum Football Box. It's an exclusive to Home Field. This is your all access pass to exclusive gear for the 2024 season with three never before seen items from your school. Plus, VIPs get even more. You get an added bonus. You get a special hat and you get the 2024 Platinum Pass for early access and discounts all season long. So don't wait. Head over to homefieldapparel.com. Again, that is homefieldapparel.com and gear up today. Let's make this college football season unforgettable. I really don't know why more people aren't talking about the defensive tackle room. The interior of the defensive line, this position group is easily the one with the most depth. You're too deep. Your first and st second string team at defensive tackle are all starting caliber. 
Devon J. Thomas, formerly Devon Elise, changed his last name for those who don't know about that yet. Devon J. Thomas, Zane Durant, Hakeem Beeman, and Keziah Izzard. All of these guys are finally presently healthy for once. You're, you're usually missing one or the other, right? Hakeem Beeman missed an extended amount of time, Keziah Izzard. But now you have all four of them. These are your first and second string defensive tackles when... I'd be okay with Hakeem Beeman and Keziah Izzard being your first and second defensive tackle, but it could easily be Jay Thomas and Durant. And then you remember that Alonzo Ford is now back into the fold. He was hurt, missed, missed the entire season in 2023. He's back from injury. You also have another veteran defensive tackle in Caleb Artis who's stuck around. And then there's redshirt freshman Ty Blanding. Okay, so I want to include him because he might rotate in from time to time, but he's been with the program now for a year plus. Devon J. Thomas, I got to get used to it myself, to be transparent. You know, it is weird to see, you know, not call him Ellie's anymore. It is Devon J. Thomas. And Akeem Beeman could have went off to the NFL. Instead, Dion Barnes was able to recruit them to come back for another season. They used that extra COVID eligibility, and now they're back. So the defensive tackle room would not have been as strong if J. Thomas and Beeman had went on to a pro career. They're back. I mean, this group is responsible for the fact that Penn State went from a top 50, you know, fringe, you know, top 50 rush defense overall in 2022. They were okay. You know, Michigan beat up on them, but they were okay. And then they went to top five in the nation. No, truly, look at the statistics. Some people might not believe that, but Penn State's defense overall was a top five team in terms of rush yards per play. Anytime you're looking for defensive statistics, start with pass yards per play, rush yards per play. Defensively, pass yards allowed per play, rush yards allowed per play. And when you look at Penn State's, they were top five in terms of rush yards allowed per play. Now, don't get me wrong. Manny Diaz, of course, deserves to take credit for that. He is the architect of this defense. Same with the linebacker group that had Curtis Jacobs and Abdul Carter before he moved down to defensive end, right? Those guys, that front seven, of course, helped out with that. And then physical safeties like Jalen Reed and KJ Winston. It's it's all encompassing here, but it starts up front. It starts up front with a group because does everybody remember that group that was extremely criticized in 2022 about the size issues? They're not big enough. They get moved out of the way easily. And now that that's not a problem. Devon J. Thomas is 300 pounds. Keziah Izzard is 310 pounds. Hakeem Beeman and Zane Duran are listed at 285, but... That's by design. That's by design. Two guys that are primarily there to stuff the run, set the tone, reset the line of scrimmage on first and second down, Jay Thomas and Izzard being the bigger players, and then two guys that are that hybrid. Two guys that are that hybrid, Hakeem Beeman and Zane Durant, that are also, they can, they can stuff the run, but their specialty is rushing after the passer and cycling in more so on third down, they can be three down defensive linemen. They don't have to come off the field as frequently, but I think Penn State's very strategic there. You have the big run stuffers in Jay Thomas and Izzard, and then you have Beeman and Durant for more pass rushing situations, even though they can cycle in and be run defenders as well. But that is the specialty. Above all else, you have proven veterans. So the run defense that was so stout a season ago in 2023 returns all of those guys. Jay Thomas, Beeman, Izzard, and Durant. And then you get back Alonzo Ford. And then you add another year of experience with Caleb Artis and Ty Blanding. And the freshmen, they have a lot of potential. They're probably not going to play as much. Liam Andrews, T.A. Cunningham. Remember, those were four-star players. And Cunningham, once upon a time, was a top 10 recruit in the nation before some eligibility issues when he was transferring high schools. That's a different conversation. And obviously, we're past that. We're at the college level now. But those guys, the defensive tackle room particularly, is in a really good spot because of Dion Barnes. And in the present, this is great for a matchup against West Virginia. When you play a game, when you play a team like West Virginia, that is run heavy, run focused, you have a big, powerful tailback in C.J. Donaldson, who's going to try to be a bruiser. You not only need the veteran players, guys that are, and again, these aren't just your average veteran players. Jay Thomas and Beeman, 
even though I don't think they would have been drafted early, they did have future careers in the NFL. They could have made NFL rosters in this cycle. A team that is run heavy. So now you have players that are talented. You have players that are knowledgeable, experienced, going up against a West Virginia team that is going to run the football, then run it again, and run even some more with, like I said, C.J. Donaldson trying to be that tone setter for the Mountaineers up the middle. And then you got to account for Garrett Green, had over 700 yards on, on the ground. And you have Jaheim White, who is that speedy tailback. Now that's where Deny Dennis Sutton and Abdul Carter come into play and the linebackers, but this group of defensive tackles does not get the respect that it deserves. And if they can stay healthy for the entirety of the season, they'll continue to prove why. And I think we will see maybe not the same type of success that Manny Diaz had against the run a season ago, but similar results because of what you're bringing back and all of those guys will be improved. I mentioned the linebackers here and at the top of the uh, top of the show, I said, is there any depth? Is there? We're going to talk about that on the other side of this break. And today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. You get to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. And it's still summertime, which means it's a great time to get tickets to Major League Baseball games. And I, for one, actually use the Game Time app to get tickets to baseball games because it's faster and easier to get tickets to those MLB games. And get this, prices on the Game Time app actually go down as it gets closer to first pitch. So you get those last minute deals, you can save up to 60% off of buying last minute tickets for not only MLB games, but sports in general, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. And you can actually save even more. So in the app, there's exclusive in-app deals called flash deals and zone deals where you get more discounts on select seats. You get all in pricing. You have no surprise fees at checkouts. You know exactly what you're going to pay up front and probably my favorite feature is that panoramic view of the seat so if you've never been to a certain venue you want to know what it's going to look like from those specific seats you get an accurate view before you show up before you buy those tickets take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use promo code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create that account and use promo code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So what about the linebackers? Do they have enough depth? It's still a major question mark. And honestly, this was even be, I, I would have the same opinion before and now presently after the dismissal of KV on keys, who would have been a second string linebacker in this case. It's part of the reason why Penn State is converting most likely to a base 4-2-5. I think we will see from time to time a 4-3, but that base defense will be a 4-2-5 with an emphasis on safeties with KJ Winston, Zachy Wheatley, and Jalen Reed. And part of that is because you don't have the depth at linebacker and you don't have the proven talent. So this is a major question mark for Penn State's team. Overall, the offensive line and the linebackers could end up being the biggest liabilities for the team this season that keeps them from that golden standard of success. So Keyes would have been that second linebacker behind Dom DeLuca in a 4-3 look and potentially, potentially a second string linebacker as well in a 4-2-5. Potenti again, he, former four-star but it's, it's not about keys anymore because, because he's not on the team. It's about looking to what Penn State has. So to overcome a loss to a second string linebacker, you have Kobe King. You have Dom DeLuca. Those are your mainstays here. And King, King is much better than people give him credit for. The defensive tackles and, and Kobe King should shake hands here because they're in the same category. And I would argue that on the team overall, Kobe King is a top five player in terms of talent and value. So if we're talking MVPs of the team, Kobe King here is top five in my opinion, just because of the value that he provides. And I think that he will be somebody that can be selected in the third round or the fourth round. He has a really good season, maybe the second round. That's I think that's a long way to go, but he's definitely draftable at the NFL level. And DeLuca, DeLuca has graded out really well according to PFF. Of course, he's a solid run defender. He's one of the strongest linebackers in the room and he holds his own in the passing game. So I think there's a misconception that he can't be a three down linebacker in a four two five look uh, remember that pick six he had last season against Delaware remember that he had two interceptions last season as a linebacker that did cycle in okay 
So Dom DeLuca and Kobe King are the returning proven talent in this linebacker room. But after that, you really don't know what you have. Yes, I'm getting to Tony Rojas here. Everyone is expecting big things from Tony Rojas, and for good reason. Optimism's there, all the potential in the world. He, you know, he he flashed when he was an early enrollee as a freshman. But none of, none of this is a guarantee. None of this is guaranteed. And I don't want to put too much expectation on Tony Rojas that he's going to be the next player to wear number 11 after Abdul Carter. Those are big shoes to fill. Do I think he can be a star player? Absolutely. But don't expect him to be that right out of the gate. The second half of the season will be really good for Tony Rojas. I think we're going to see some growing pains in the first four or five games or so. I feel like the light bulb might turn on more so in that second half of the season. So Tony Rojas has potential, but allow him to develop into that star role. Then there's Tyler Elsden. Tyler Elsden's the veteran leader, great football IQ, but we saw at times he can be a liability with his limits as an athlete. You lost keys. So is Penn State, where, where does Penn State turn after that for depth? Keon Wiley is still out with an undisclosed injury and was set to miss significant time. We don't know exactly what that means. Is Penn State prepared to turn to a true freshman like Kari Jackson, who seems to be, I've mentioned him as a potential replacement in the too deep part of the depth chart. So the depth is limited. If Penn State's going to do that and pull the red shirt from a true freshman in Kari Jackson, this group could see that boost later in the season if Keon Wiley does come back. He would need to return someone that I had penciled in as a breakout player for this season. He had a great performance at the Rose Bowl. He was a backup to Abdul Carter last season. Keon Wiley is really what would have been a nice boost to the linebacker group for this season, but we don't have a timetable for his return. And hopefully there is one. I can't speculate one way or another because we don't have the information as far as how much is he practicing, how is rehab going. We just know that he suffered an injury during spring football and he was set to miss a significant amount of time. If they can get Keon Wiley back, that is massive for the linebacker room. And then if the linebackers take another hit, I, I don't think Penn State will hesitate to move Abdul Carter back. It's not their preference. That's not what they want to do. They want to keep him at defensive end. They want to have that dynamic duo of Deny Dennis Sutton and Carter. But if they have to, they will. They'll move Carter back and then they'll have Amin Vanover play more. And then maybe maybe that decision's also predicated on when Zariah Fisher returns, somebody that's on another injury timetable that we don't know about, like Keon Wiley. You get those players back. And remember, Penn State said that Carter is going to have a week-by-week -week game plan. So the anticipation is that he is going to be at defensive end until further notice, and then they use him at linebacker when necessary. But I think that's going to be determined week-by-week -week based on opponent, based on depth, based on game plan to stop said opponent. And that's the versatility of Abdul Carter, and which is why I had him as the most valuable player for Penn State's team this season. Not Drew Aller. Abdul Carter is the most valuable player on Penn State's team for this season. And you can see why with the linebacker depth. That'll do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lines. I appreciate each and every one of you for checking out this episode. Please be a part of the discussion down in the comments section. Your thoughts on Drew Aller as more of a mobile quarterback, the defensive tackles, and the linebacker depth. Is it, is it, it's a concern for me. Is it a concern for you? Please leave a like on this episode, share it with friends and family. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State football teams. And of course, we're going to have more coverage around Penn State training camp as we get ever so close to Penn State versus West Virginia. Again, thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch. For your second listen, you got to check out Locked On College Football. Hosted by Spencer McLaughlin, I've been a guest on that show multiple times. I enjoy it, and I know you will as well. He's talking about everything from NIL to the impact of the transfer portal to the unprecedented season that's coming up for college football. Conference realignment, expanded college football playoff. Spencer is talking about all of it over at Locked On College Football. Again, that's Locked On College Football, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.